welcome to Achieving Your Optimal Health. I think this is number 16 in our series, and this is our first open forum with the experts. And we have two experts here, Annie and Prima Martin and Loya Riggin. And we'll hear more about them as, as we introduce them. And I'm David Smith. My expertise is trail running. And Annie, um, what would you say is your key expertise? Uh, sorry, I, my allergies, I may sneeze. Oh, okay, um, okay. <laughs> I focus a lot on the impact of emotions on our well being. So from the spiritual side, how much, how much of our, our trauma or our emotions affect our outcome? Okay. And Loya, oh, okay. Oh. And, and Loya, what, what is your primary expertise, would you say? It's hypnosis. I'm a certified consulting hypnotist through the National Guild of Hypnotists. And I help uh, individuals who had childhood trauma or trauma in general, and I help them to overcome that and heal. Okay, excellent. So what we're going to do is, you know, here you're on the health education link of Las Vegas area trails where we keep all our webinars organized. And we are on the open forum tonight. So I just click on the open forum. And here we go. And you can see here, um, we've got some some questions that we're going to use as starters. And so what I'd like to do is just throw out that first question. And, um, and it is, what are the top five things everyone needs to do to be healthy in terms of your area of expertise? So if you can narrow it down to five, I'm going to start because I just want to um, create the momentum here. And um, I'd say in the area of trail running and running in the mountains and having that whole, uh, that whole part of your life, I would say consistency. Um, the, the first one is consistency, which involves connecting with your passion and your spirit, having a strong why, which will help you be consistent. The second, is form and technique. If you don't have proper form, you're going to um, repeat your mistakes and put stresses on your body. You're going to end up injured. The third is the 10% rule. So if I were starting out, I would say don't increase next week's total mileage by more than 10% over this week's total mileage. And that could be true for a lot of things in life. Don't just take a huge erratic jump in whatever you're doing, but work for that steady increase. The fourth area I would say would be shoes slash running surface. And I can tell you with the wrong shoes, and if I'm running on asphalt um, or a wrong surface really, um, I'm, I'm on a timeline to injury and discouragement and potentially you know, interruption in my whole program. So shoes and running surface. And then the fifth is, is, I know I'm grouping some of these to squeeze some more in, but the fifth is diet, supplements, and your overall weight. And uh, you need to take in proper nutrition, fuel yourself correctly, and then key supplements. And we'll get into that a little bit later. And if you're, you're running or doing anything that includes impact, I would say your weight is crucial because um, you know, more weight is actually going to create greater impact, which leads to injuries and, and, early exhaustion and a number of bad things. So those are my five things, the top five things to do to be healthy in terms of, of trail running. Um, 
let's let's go with Loya. Loya, okay. what would you say are the, your top five things? Um, my top five things for anybody would be uh, to meditate daily. I think that's really important to just have some quiet time and uh, just meditate and kind of, you know, put the intent out there how you want your day to go. Uh, the second thing I would say is to always try to fill a sense of gratefulness. I think that's really important every single day that puts us in a really great mindset. The third thing is to get in nature. I know that's not easy when people work a lot, but even just a few minutes of being outdoors, super important and very um, helpful to our state of, of being. The fourth thing is to, I would say for people to try to change from a mindset of maybe negative self thought about themselves to loving themselves. I always think that's really important. Yes. And then the fifth thing is to surround your people or yourself with people who uh, you really enjoy being around, who really support you and enjoy being around you too. I think that makes those five things make all the difference in everyday life. Okay, I'm I'm writing these down as you're as you're saying them because I I want a record of this. Especially gratefulness. Out of everything, I have to say that I think that being grateful is one of the real biggies every day, because you cannot be feeling very good about life and then. If you start looking at everything and grateful for even the small stuff, it really changes your mindset quickly. Okay. You have a really great uh, positive attitude. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And the um, opposite you could think of would be um, not being grateful and, and that leads to a lot of negative stuff. Okay. Very good. Very good. And it's, it's kind of interesting as I was looking at mine, I was thinking, yeah, I do these things. These are, are really what I feel is important. And then as I heard yours, Loya, I thought, Oh my gosh, I've really slipped on these. <laughs> so I'm, I'm, I'm so glad that you shared yours because I'm, I'm going to take a look at that and, and, uh, let that inform my my life. So thank you. You were so great. Much. Honestly, I listened to yours and I was like, yes, I need more of that. <laughs> yes, I need more of that too. So we all learn from each other. That's what I love. Okay. I learn a lot from you and from Annie. Well, there we go. That's that's why we're a team. But it is really interesting how that works. You you mm -hmm. you have your focus and you think, wow, these are the things. And then you hear someone else and think, oh my God. What have I been thinking? How could I miss these other things? <laughs> so that's very good. Okay, Annie, go ahead. What are the top five things everyone needs to do to be healthy in terms of your area of expertise? So what I, I pick the five that I hear from the quantum discovery, quantum healing in the, um, the soul retrieval sessions that I do. So I, I took five of those. Okay. And um, the first one, that I, that almost everyone is, that every, everyone has is to release emotions. So it's a lot of the soul, the spirit saying, there's no need to hold on to this. You can let it wow. go, like let go of, of the, the anger, let go of the, the emotion that really wasn't yours to begin with. You inherited it through your family um, dynamic. So releasing emotions and not holding on to them because they will manifest into mm -hmm. physical ailments. Um, the second thing that I hear, which is what Loya mentioned, was meditation. It, it, for those that have a, a biblical background, on the seventh day, God rested. And mm -hmm. we forget that we as humans need to have time for our, our spirit to integrate information to our mind and body. We need to have that downtime. So meditation is... An, an, is even if it's only 10 minutes a day, it plays a huge role. Mm -hmm. Another thing is attitude of, you know, and we see this where you see really grumpy old people and they have arthritis and, and their, cur their whole body curls in because the attitude, it becomes an order to the mind that gets sent to the body and the body acts in kind. 
So the, how we, going back to gratitude, joy, they're high vibration words, uh, eating clean foods. That's sort of across the board of uh, the spirit and soul, almost every person, like eat better food and eat cleaner food and eat food that doesn't have chemicals that's going to suppress the body. And a sense of belonging that this is, this is everyone 100% is be you. The soul is always saying, be who you were meant to be and don't be afraid to be you. Don't adapt to your environment. Belong. To belong in the sense that honor who you are and find the people who honor you for who you are, which is a lot of what a uh, lawyer was saying, the supportive tribe piece of it. Okay. And, and I just want to cycle back on, on one of yours. And these, these are awesome. I, I think that um, I could create a set of flashcards on these <laughs> and just pull it out, you know, pull one of these cards out every, um, every hour and just look at it to, uh, to refocus myself and recenter myself. But um, your third one was attitude. Attitude. Um, and what, how would you describe that attitude? Well, if we look at, if we look at vibration in terms of words, we know that it, we have, we have science. You, anyone can go on the internet, do a Google search for megahertz and, and whatever word, joy, uh, joy, gratitude, enlightenment, and then also shame and guilt. So if your attitude is really driven by shame or guilt, it's really bad. It's going to be a poor attitude because it's mm -hmm. vibrating at a lower megahertz. So okay. attitude, people who are, um, people who are very pessimistic and projective and they're not honoring who they are and they're not, they're not addressing the emotions like that Freudian shadow bag, they're not mm -hmm. dealing with that and they're avoiding it and they're projecting outward. Their attitude is going to reflect in the world around them. Okay. Very good. So high vibration, high vibration, attitude. compassion. Yeah. Joy, compassion, gratitude. Okay. Very good. Thanks for clarifying that. I would like to add that I have a chart. I think it's by Abraham Hicks. A friend gave it to me. But it talks about the three top vibrational emotions to have in which you start manifesting good things in your life. And it's love, yeah. passion, and joy. Those three, being in those state of mind, things start flowing your way. Like when you've been in a really good, joyful mood and good things are happening, you're meeting people, they're happy. It really changes. And lots of good things do start happening. Oh, I yeah. just wanted to add that. I like that. That's the zone of manifestation. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yes. Yes. So all this lays the groundwork for manifesting good things. Um, Loya, if you could, could you take a picture of that chart and send it to me or is it digital? Oh, I'd love to. Do you want me to email it to you or picture better? Yeah, definitely um, email it to me and I will put it up with this article. Great. So, yeah, and if do that. Um, Annie, if you have any charts you go by or any diagrams, any visuals, infographics, um, definitely um, share those too, and we'll we'll put them with the article because I think people need. Uh, I know I need some real, just a path to go on. You know, mm -hmm. a, a track to run on. Otherwise, I get off track pretty easily because um, just like uh, you mentioned, meditation is so important. What, med what meditation does is it gets us out of the doing into the being. And if we're, you know, if, if, and, and so, does, so does having a chart, really, because that's a way of keeping on track. So... Yeah, yeah, we have all these great ideas and visions, but when real life hits and and push comes to shove, it's easy to get off, and then you you wonder why things are not going well in your life, and you think, oh my gosh, I I missed, I'm I'm off my five main focuses here. This is really good. Thank you. Um, okay. 
So our next question, what are the top five things people should avoid? And I'll shoot mine out. My, um, I, I guess that, you know, running to me is not just physical, but spiritual, but a lot of my, my five things have to do with the, the physical as far as, as workout. And I, I'd say um, the, the first thing is sporadic workouts. And when you're doing something one day, then you then you skip a few days or a week or like you've got the weekend warrior, you're asking yourself for injuries and you don't have that steady improvement. You don't get into the zone that allows you to really uh, to really maximize the effect of of running or being in nature. Um, so I'd say avoid sporadic workouts. And the second thing that I would say is important is avoid bad form. And, um, and I've had this happen again and again, I'll get an injury. And it comes down to that I'm, you know, pounding myself wrong, I'm holding myself wrong, I'm taking two large strides. Um, and, and pretty soon, you know, with this repetitive motion, there's an injury. And I think this can also be um, kind of a symbol of what happens in our life when we go about doing things, whether it's in a relationship or whether it's in raising our children or, or um, in working our occupation. Um, if we have bad habits, <laughs> bad form, uh, you know, something's gonna, gonna break at some point. So. Um, definitely with running, that's true. Uh, third one is increasing too rapidly. And I think that often what the temptation is when you're starting something new, and I, I, I'll, I'll use this for running, but once again, I think it's, 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 it's a symbol of, of what happens elsewhere in life. You, you have all this energy and you just jump into it. And um, if you, do that with running. What's going to happen is you will do well for a while. You'll do well for a few weeks, maybe even a month or so, but, but you're going to face injury. Things are going to come crashing down. And, and so, you know, look for that steady increase rather than rapid increase. And, you know, especially when you're you can do that. Imagine with a new relationship, if you're if you're dating someone, or you've got a a new friendship, and that person just is all over you. <laughs> you know, it can it can really be almost stifling. And and so you know, in anything, uh, you know, pace yourself. Moderation is one of the great Greek uh, virtues. Okay, next one is. Um, and these are almost the, the flip side of my first five things to do. The, the next one is bad shoes or, or running surface. And, and I can say that shoe wise, um, there are certain shoes that, that I've bought. I've, I thought, you know, I'm going to try this new type of shoe. Their advertising has all these features and everything. And, and it, uh, kind of realigns my body and, um, within a week, my knees are blown out, <laughs> or or it's a shoe that doesn't have the correct cushioning, or it had the heels are too high rather than a zero drop, and and all that is so important. So the equipment that you use, in and the tools that you use in whatever your your work um, or your exercise. Um, or even your meditation, you know, the, the tools that you use, the approach you take, if it's not good, um, if it's, it can create problems and running surface. Um, I can tell you that um, if I run on cement, that's the hardest surface. It's going to um, affect every joint in my body. And pretty soon I have back pains. I have, um, you know, knee problems, hip problems. Um, if I go to asphalt, it's a little better, 
But the problem is an asphalt surface, even though it's, a, believe it or not, softer than cement, um, it is going to eventually create problems. And, and uh, the reason is because it's, it's harder than it should be. And, and then the surface that you need. And also, one thing about um, cement and asphalt is that they're a flat surface. And what this means is every single step you take is putting pressure and stress on the same group of muscles and joints because it's very flat, as opposed to running off road. And, and when you do that, um, you know, you're utilizing your ankles and strengthening your ankles and, and varying the, um, the impact. So, Bad shoes, bad running surface, avoid that. And then the next thing is bad diet. Um, I found that certain things that, that I eat can, act, can very quickly negatively affect me. Uh, for me, it's like lots of bread, wheat. Um, that'll affect me in a negative way. Um, um, I found that a vegetarian diet with good protein is is very helpful to me um and being you know heavy weight i would enjoy that i would avoid um being overweight with any kind of impact workout because it just is not as fun it's putting more pressure on your body even if you're walking whatever you're doing and so you know, it's, it's tough. I, I lost um, 20 pounds last spring and um, it was a lot of work. There was no easy way that I um, went about it. And, and I, I got really discouraged. I, I gained about five pounds of that back. So, um, you know, I've gained about um, in the last few weeks. Um, and, and so I'm, I'm thinking I've gained, you know, 25% of that back and I'm already feeling the effect on my workouts. And so um, that is very important. And it affects my attitude, my, you know, I get, I get a little foggy. I, you know, lots of things happen when I'm not at my ideal weight. And, um, and it just makes everything harder. So, and definitely um, trail running is, is much harder get exhausted earlier I get tired just in the day earlier and and so um, those things I would really um, say you know avoid so okay those are my five so um, Loya how about you what are the top five things people should avoid um the well one of the real biggies one of my top five would be toxic people, people who are negative, who uh, aren't really good friends, who just bring a lot of drama and stress, you mm. know, to your life. We've all had people like that, that you see them coming and your stomach just sort of gets sick, like, oh no, or you see when they call. So that's yes. going to be one of my top five is toxic people, people who are just not good for you to be around. How do you uh, avoid them? Uh, Pretty much, you have to just cut them out of your life. I think that if they're <laughs> if they're not good for you, uh, again, it comes to surrounding yourself with good people, supportive people. Mm -hmm. um, avoid, avoid, avoid. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Sometimes those types of people I I found are like vampires. They want to latch on to you too because they they need your positive energy and they want to suck it out. <laughs> yeah, they drain you. They drain you emotionally. Yeah. <laughs> Um, another one of my top five would be again, just what you said about eating a good diet because junk food, um, food that's bad for you just makes you feel icky all the way around. It, it's not even just physical. It's also mental. Um, that makes you feel bad. So I'm going to say to avoid junk food, bad foods, uh, to eat clean whenever you can. The... Third thing would be negative self-talk. You know, I, I just am so surprised about how many of my clients, successful, wonderful people, literally 
talk so negative to themselves. You know, they mm. they call themselves stupid and why'd you do that? And they replay things they did over and over and like I could have did that, should have did that, would have did that. Mm. The one thing that uh, as far as that goes with the negative self-talk is the would-haves, could-haves, and should-haves, and I can't. People need to say goodbye to that. You can't change anything from your past. The would-haves, could-haves, I should-have, did it, this, said that. You can't change it. It's, it you just got to let it go. So I would definitely um, get rid of negative self-talk. And the way I look at it is if you wouldn't talk to your friends or loved ones that way, why do you talk to yourself that way? Yeah. People say things to themselves silently in their mind that they would never say to another person. So I say avoid the negative self-talk. Give yourself love and take care of yourself. Um, stay away from those low, those negative moods, the depression, sadness, anger, frustration energy attracts like energy and it's like when you've been having a bad day you notice how one thing just seems to get worse after another it's because you're down there in that mood that frustration and bad mood and you just keep attracting that same energy mm. and so try to lift yourself out of it never stay in a negative mood if you can help but again i emailed that vibrational scale to you yes and so you'll be posting that later, but that'll give some people some good ideas of where you want to stay. And it's not always easy, but you know something, put on some good music or, you know, something that makes you feel better and kind of pulls you out of that mood. Call your best friend, whatever it takes. Just don't stay in that mood. Uh, avoid those bad moods. Another thing is, um, I think I got everything except for the fact that people need to, I would say, avoid people pleasing tons of people people please and they spread themselves thin trying to do and please others and i think that we need to set boundaries for ourselves and we need to avoid people pleasing we need to do and say what we really feel mm. and so i think that that is i think a lot of people do a lot more stuff than they want to do because they're trying to people please and they're not being true to themselves so definitely, those would be my five things. Okay, wow. Yeah, each one of them I'm thinking, oh my God, these are, this is something I need to really be focusing on. Um, let me cycle back and ask you a couple questions based on your five and, and just a couple of your five. Um, avoid bad food. What, what is the worst food? that you would say that you never, never eat this? Never ever eat it. Um, <laughs> or at least, you know, make it really, really seldom. <laughs> I, I think that um, just heavy foods, foods with a lot of sauces, Italian dishes, for example, they're so good, you know, to, as you're tasting it, but you don't feel good afterwards. It's heavy. Um, I don't know, some would be like, to me, lasagna or, you know, uh, fettuccine That's, Alfredo, breads. Lasagna is my favorite. <laughs> taking away all the good stuff. I know. It, it, it's so good when it crosses your lips, but afterwards, you just feel terrible and sluggish. And, mm -hmm. you know, it's not good for you. Uh, desserts, a lot of desserts. Why? Um, just food, that, food that's really heavy, and I think we all kind of know what those foods are. When you eat it, you feel like you're, you know, can't even get up from the sofa. Yeah, yeah. Tired and and gross. You just feel gross. Mm. A few Almost moments sick. of pleasure. A few yeah. moments of pleasure for a lot of pain, and then you have self judgment, <laughs> which is another right. one of yours. And afterwards, <laughs> it's like, ah, oh, why'd I do that? I feel terrible. And it's really yeah. quantity. Because I, like, yeah. any of us can eat any food in the world, but it's the quantity of food that we're eating is what makes us that lethargic, sedated. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can be a vegetarian and yeah. just eat too much. Yeah. <laughs> You're eating all the right stuff, but it's too much. Okay, that's good. Um, and I would, I would add one thing to that too, which would be um, avoid sugar, which I feel 
is a poison and it does really evil things to your system. So um, yeah, so my personal one is sugar. Okay. And, I, and if I might add to that, I do believe in an 80-20 split, you know, that if you're eating 80% of the time clean, mm -hmm. it's okay. You can't ever say, I don't, I'm never gonna have that food or I can't have that food. You know what, if you wanna have a little bit of it every once in a great while, have a little bit. But we're talking everyday bad food, heavy food, food that's not fueling you. Yeah, no one has any business drinking a two liter of Coke a day. Mm -hmm. There's there certain things we have no business, we have no business even. Agreed. You know, in any capacity having in our diet. You know, that's, that's a really interesting thing too. I like this, I like this 80-20 split and you know, what you're saying about just drinking liters of Coke every day. Um, but the 80-20 split is really important as a, as a rule of life for me because that's another one of my elements of running. You know, I do not run my hardest every single day, day after day. Um, but I, I'll take a day off each week and let my body recuperate. And I'll run hard one day, lighter the next day, hard the next day, lighter the next day. So I'll, I'll bury that. And my best, like, like when I'm losing weight and when I'm um, getting into my best conditioning, um, one thing that I do is I'll give myself an escape valve day every mm -hmm. week. And mm -hmm. if I give, if I, you know, I can crack down every day of the week, if, if knowing that there's this one day I'm going to have my escape valve. And, mm -hmm. and then I can eat what I, um, you know, what I've been disciplining myself against and, and, and just on that one day, because if you're too hard on yourself, I found my body will rebel and then I'll give up the whole thing. So, so and then I, what happens, you have this craving, mm -hmm. you want this craving, you're telling your body, no, you can't have this. Mm -hmm. Then now you want to be defiant. Then you consume it and then you feel shame for consuming it. Yeah, there you go. Giving your body permission to have it in certain doses. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So okay. when you have a denial, you have guilt and shame. Mm -hmm. When you have a plan and you allow it and you honor it, you have joy. Mm -hmm. It's joy mm. to have the two Oreo cookies rather than the shame for eating when you're not supposed to have sugar at all. There's we're playing mm -hmm. with emotions now. Agree. Very, very good. I, I love it. My gosh. Okay, Annie, it's your turn. So, Loya and I were very parallel, so I changed some of mine. Um, I, I had junk food, I had fast food, and I, I took that off my list. So, I want to talk about absorbing other people's rules. That's a big one as a spiritual empowerment coach I run into where people have the cognitive dissonance between what they're supposed to believe and how they want to act. And so there's this internal conflict that creates all sorts of chaos because the rules they think they're supposed to abide by do not match who they were meant to be. Their mission in this lifetime may not match. So I think we have to have a better understanding of the rules that we grew up with and that those rules may not, they may not apply to us at this moment in time mm -hmm. and to honor who we are and the rules that we're creating for ourselves to do what we feel is our calling. Um, so avoid absorbing other people's rules. I gotta say, people... I, I, I wish that I'd had you saying that when I was in my first career as a pastor, because <laughs> talk about having all those shoulds and, and part of, part of what happened personally with me, is it all came crashing down because I was too hard on myself. And yeah. I was um, living by a whole lot of external rules. And um, it does, it, it, at some point, you are going to rebel. Yeah. And, or your body's going to rebel. And, and so, yes, um, thank you belatedly for that and, good piece of advice. 
with that, David, I don't know if, and if you, either of you caught the video on Facebook. I have a video from the Bible Project. Hmm. And it's a different perspective on how to see, how to see the multidimensional view of the, the Christian perspective of God, Jesus, and spirit, the Father, Son, Holy Ghost. And it's looking at it very differently. So you, you David, may have seen it from a different angle than what you were taught to, to preach about. So your belief system was, was not quite in alignment with your calling mm -hmm. because your calling was seeing it in a broader perspective at a higher viewpoint. You know, I, I've come to that conclusion after a lot of pain and suffering. Yeah. <laughs> so, so yeah, yeah. If I, yeah, once again, if I, if I'd had you around to tell me that 25 years ago, my gosh, I could have avoided a whole lot of pain and suffering. Could you send me the link to that video? Yeah, yeah. Perfect. Okay, and I'll add that to this article. Okay. Wonderful. And then okay. my second one is acting out of fear. Most of us behave with fear as the driver instead of courage. And you have to have fear to have courage. By definition, courage requires fear. But courage is the one behind the driver's seat. And fear is in the back seat. Fear should never be the driver. And so we should avoid acting out of fear. Because fear just creates resistance. You can't lean into fear. You can lean into courage. You, you pull back from fear. Mm. My third, good. right? So... How, how we perceive fear. Fear is important. Like you should be afraid if you're standing at the edge of a cliff that's, you know, a couple hundred feet high or a couple thousand feet high, you should be afraid. But if there's courage and you're on hang gliding, fear can't keep you from enjoying the, the experience of hang gliding, right? Like we have to understand that the two of them play a role. One is for survival and one is not. One is for thriving. Courage brings you forward. So that's my second. My third is isolation, which as a veteran, a disabled vet, in the world of disabled vet, that is the most paralyzing, handicapping thing we can do to ourselves is to isolate ourselves from the people that fill our cup. And then I want to talk about denying emotions. We were talking about the food. If, if we feel angry, we shouldn't deny ourselves the experience of going and moving through anger, if we're angry, honor the anger. Don't sit in it, don't stew in it. But if we're angry, honor the anger. If we're upset, if we're sad, cry. Like we, we, we have created this culture in America where emotions have become, like, we should only talk about the good things, but we're not in balance if we're only talking about good things. We're not in balance if we're only talking about the bad things. Mm -hmm. So we have to honor it because what happens then is that we move through life denying the, the lower vibration emotions like anger and, and sadness and we you can't hit joy if you don't have the spectrum with the low points. You can't hit the high points without the low points. You have to have, when you expand your spectrum, you have to pick up both sides. And if you can't have joy, what you end up having is foreboding joy start saying oh I can't have joy I don't deserve joy or whatever that emotion is and then you pull back and you shorten your spectrum of emotions and then we get people who can't express their emotions because their their bandwidth is so narrow you cannot truly feel compassion and joy and all these beautiful things if you don't also honor the other side of it so avoid denying the emotions would be my um the last one, because I was, some of my things overlapped with Loya. Mm -hmm. Okay. This is very, very good. And, and as I said earlier, um, I could put these on a flashcard and <laughs> pull it out every hour. Um, and, and they, each one of these requires some, some real meditation and, and focus. 
Um, Holly has just come on. Holly, it's good to see you. And, Hi. And what we're doing is we're going through, uh, we're, we're each taking turn to um, answer five um, questions. And the first one, what are the top five things everyone needs to do to be healthy in terms of your area of expertise? Would you like to catch us up on yours, Holly? Woo, okay. <laughs> um, well, I think that the five things that I would say to be healthy for me and how I work, I think the number one thing is to uh, resolve suppressed emotions. And these suppressed emotions could be emotions from childhood that you never fully experienced out of shame or maybe out of fear or maybe out of a, a strategy to, to uh, get by in life um, because you weren't allowed to feel your feelings. I mean, it's modeled to us from very early age to not feel our feelings fully, but to get away from them and do things to get away from them. Okay. Um, so that would be my number one thing. Uh, my number two thing is to resolve life depleting belief systems. <clears throat> So these belief systems that come hand in hand actually with uh, the suppressed emotions, because if you have a um, experience that happens when you're like, say before age five, you're coming more from a feeling level. And if you don't feel the feeling fully, you may make up a belief about it, such as uh, people don't like me or uh, mm. no one listens to me or I'm not important or I'm bad. And these things then, along with the suppressed emotion, will continue to create that same experience for you throughout your life if you don't resolve them. <clears throat> so for me, it's like looking at these deep-seated, life-depleting belief systems. And they're really, these two things of the feelings and the belief systems are really not hard to find. You need to look no further than the past week or two of your life and see what's coming up for you and what's been in your face, so to speak. And that's where I usually begin with people. Um, wow. The third thing I would say is detoxification. I'm really big on detoxification because uh, not only if you hold suppressed emotions and negative belief systems, you may even hold certain toxins in your system to help support that negative belief system so they take on a physical quality. But there's also the fact that we live in a very toxic environment. Uh, our air quality in cities especially, but sometimes in farming communities, there's also pesticides and herbicides in the air and uh, residue from uh, maybe uh, harvesting and things like that. So uh, it's not just that we live in the city that we have these toxins that we get exposed to, but also through the water supply and also if uh, we live near certain plants that are putting plants, meaning like industrial plants that are putting out toxins in the air, there's a lot of communities that have big uh, plants that put out particular toxins and they have a lot of cancer in their areas. So detoxifying is my number three. Uh, number four is to energize, energize the body. Uh, do this via strengthening the energy meridians that's based in Chinese medicine and um, and once your energy is flowing well a lot of things will naturally detox and even emotions might come up uh, that can be resolved um, I didn't get as far as number five that's <laughs> I, was all right. trying, I was trying to write while you were doing that but I was like okay but yeah so Number five, I think, would be to uh, find balance everywhere in your life. Not only with what you, how you exercise or, or how you play or, or how you uh, relate to other people, find balance in the relationships and find balance in yourself, uh, what, what brings joy to you and um, continue to focus on that as you work with all the other top four. Okay, excellent. No, um, yeah, and as with Loya and Annie's, I've got to say this this like bears going back and 
and reflecting on each of these and maybe using that as, you know, today I'm going to reflect on this one. Wow. Okay, so um, then to catch up with us, um, what are the five things people should avoid? Top five things. Uh, well, I would have to say my number one would be negative people. <laughs> you know, then you have those people that you go around and they're always talking about the negative things that have happened to them, the negative things that are going on in their lives, mm -hmm. all their illnesses. Uh, you know, when you ask, what are you doing about it? Oh, well, you know, there's nothing you can do about it. Um, mm -hmm. You know, so uh, I would say that affects your energy system and is a real drain on you when you're around negative people. So um, avoid negative people. What do you think of listening to the news a lot? <laughs> uh, I don't. I don't even have a TV, so I I okay. don't listen to news. If I want to know something, I will hear it through my social media, mm. uh, or someone will tell me if I need to know. If I it's not something that's really on my radar, you know, and I'm not then I'm not worrying about it. But that's the uh, that would bring me to my number two uh, thing to avoid, which is worry. Um, I have this idea about worry, that worry is a lot like the opposite of prayer. And when you're worrying, like say if you have a child and they're going through something and they're away from home, they may be in college or maybe grown up and or at school and you're, you're worried about them all day, all you're doing is sending them negative energy. Uh, if you can stop the worrying and actually go into prayer for them, um, and see a positive outcome in your mind towards them, you're actually sending them then and connecting with them with a more positive energy that will be much more helpful to them than worrying. So that would be number two. Number three, avoid foods that don't agree with you. Um, you know, really, some of our food supply is contaminated. And, um, you know, I'm a really big proponent on organic eating and, and, um, grass-fed beef, and um, I'm not someone that, I'm someone that says you should have fats in your diet. That's good for the brain. But uh, the quality of food is going to determine the quality of your health. So uh, avoid some of the foods that definitely, I would say, at the top of the food chain with the animal products. If you're going to eat animal products, you should make sure that they're very clean animal products, that not only were they raised well, but that they weren't fed grains or grasses that may have had pesticides and herbicides on them, because mm. they will also absorb that into their meat and you'll be eating that. Okay. Um, and I've, heard, I've also heard a kind of interesting thing. I heard someone say once that the way we treat the animals that we eat um, if they're mistreated uh, that you can actually absorb that negative energy by eating those animals so yeah, i think so too and not only that and, and because it's not only about that you're in, absorbing the energy of that but you're also absorbing the stress hormones mm. that are going into the animal during its lifetime that that just flood its whole system and um you know if you're sensitive to that, when you eat meat, you may feel depressed after you eat it, wow. uh, or you may feel hyper and anxious. And it may be that you're eating the stress hormones that are in the meat. Wow. Yeah. Okay. I hadn't, I hadn't thought of it that way. That's, that's interesting. Right. Okay. And what else to avoid? I, you know, it's so individual for so many people on what to avoid. Um, you know, um that it's it's hard to say what would mm -hmm. i say would just uh, overall avoid because um some people have no problem with certain foods but another th uh, one food that i would say do your best to avoid and that's sugar um i haven't had sugar in my house uh I don't even know when I've used sugar. I think I might have a little bag of sugar I've had for about a year and a half, mm -hmm. but I just, I don't use sugar for anything. I use natural sweeteners or stevia or honey or fruit. 
or something like that. But uh, sugar is a, a huge issue with lowering the immune system response and for 12 hours after you eat it. So mm. it's not just like, oh, I have a little bit of sugar. Actually, there was a guy that I studied, a doctor I studied with in, in Germany. And he used to say, look, I'm not saying don't have sweets. I'm saying if you're going to have sweets and you want a pie, eat, eat as much as the pie of it that you want. Mm -hmm. Meaning eat it all at once, let your body adjust, and then don't eat more like every day. Oh, I'll just have a little piece. Oh, I'll just mm -hmm. have a little piece. So every day you're, you're putting sugar in your body and you're decreasing your immune system response. So that would have to be my fourth one was actually sugar. Uh, avoid sugar at all costs. It's just not good for you. Okay, very good. You know, it's, it's kind of interesting. Um, you coming on late after the two of us, the, the three of us have shared, some of yours do overlap, but that even confirms some of the things that we have shared. So, so this is this is very interesting. That you know, it may be a, actually a very good thing that you were not here in the beginning. Um, yeah. <laughs> okay, but but okay, very very good. Okay, now the next one is a little lighter, uh, maybe a little easier. And that, that, that question is, what is your favorite supplement and why? And I'll start that out now that we're all caught up. Okay. And, um, and I actually cheated. I listed three. Um, the first one is a glucosamine chondroitin MSM supplement. Um, and and that's, it just helps the joints. And um, running puts stress on the joints. And so in my area of um, ex expertise or my area of physical um, you know, passion, it's, it's, uh, that is running, um, glucosamine, chondroitin, MSM makes a big difference to me. Um, the next one is um, super lysing, which is uh, a combination of lysing, echinacea, and I guess there's something else in there, but but the point and garlic, yeah. The point that I'm that I'm making is that um, I ran out recently, and there are a few times in my life that I've run out of it and thought, oh, I don't need this. Um, within uh, you know a few weeks, I'll have a cold or sore throat, and maybe I bring this on myself because subconsciously I'm thinking I need this thing, but. Um, I've got to say that is one of the most important um, supplements. And then the last one I would say is digestive enzymes. And um, what this does, you know, they, they say you are what you eat. And my um, adjustment to that little phrase is actually you are what you digest. <laughs> so you can, you can eat some very good foods, but um, you only really get what you digest and digestive enzymes, I think are, are really vital. So supplements. Okay. So Annie, what are your favorite supplements? The only thing I take is CBD. I, that's really the only supplement, wow. which okay. is not necessarily the right answer. That's just, there's the, no right answer. The truth in this moment for me, mm -hmm. um, I, I take it because my grandmother has dementia, severe dementia, mm -hmm. and CBD is known to prevent the plaque from building up in the brain. And so I take it, I take it for anti-inflammatory, having an allergy to wheat flour, um, that helps with my, my body for accidental ingestion, and then for my brain. Okay, and I understand that inflammation um, leads to cancer so inflammation creates wreaks havoc on the body yeah okay so cbd okay that was a quick answer and very pointed okay and favorite supplement um loya um i'm not sure that i have a favorite supplement i take several supplements 
I take CBD oil as well every day. Um, I take complex B uh, vitamin supplements, uh, cod liver oil. There's all kinds of things that I take, but uh, I, I don't necessarily know that I have a favorite one. I like them all. I do all kinds of things. Okay. Okay. Well, very fair and good. So yeah, and I, I, I myself take like 40 supplements a day, maybe too much. Um, but um, yeah, yeah, I, I hear you that, you know, it's hard to come up with your favorite and, and that could be very based on who you are. Okay. And so um, um, let's see, they do the Annie. Let's see, Annie's done it. Oh, Holly, okay. What is your favorite supplement? Well, I, I, I'm like you, David. I've actually got three that are my mainstays, not only for myself, but for my patients. Even though all the ones that y'all have mentioned uh, um, are really excellent. And uh, especially I wanted to mention on your super lysine, um, that is really good if you start to get a cold sore to really mm -hmm. amp that up, the super lysine, and it will never develop. Oh, and so that's okay. a really good thing to know about that super lysine. Okay, so the things that I, I would recommend to people, the number one thing is oxy powder. Uh, there's also a called MAG-7. It's almost the same as oxy powder. And MAG-7 and oxy powder are magnesium-based uh, supplements that also oxygenate the colon as it goes through the body. So magnesium helps to liquefy everything in the small and the large intestine. So you don't get the buildup along the walls, which of course keep you from absorbing your nutrients, but also leach bacteria back into the system continuously if it's stuck there. And sometimes with people will even cause diverticulosis and diverticulitis, which is pouches in the large intestine that hold um, putrefied food which leach bacteria continuously into the system so the first thing i ask people and it's a you know a subject that a lot of people are more um have a harder time talking about and matter of fact don't know what normal is and that's what's your normal bowel movement if someone tells me oh i have one every three days gulp that's not enough and that is a sluggish digestive system so um, I put them on oxy powder to clean them out and then to oxygenate uh, the, the wall of the colon, the large and the small intestine so that it can heal. And I keep them on it for about a month. And then I just have them do it whenever they feel like they might need it. If they're getting slow with their bowel movements, a lot of people have magazines and things like that in their bathrooms. And they sit there and sit there and strain and causes hemorrhoids and causes prolapses and and uh, causes damage actually to the lower colon. So if you're not just sitting down and releasing and going at least every day once, you're not having a clean digestive system and you're not absorbing vitamins well and you're not uh, keeping your system overall clean because the large intestine takes out about 70 to 80 percent of the toxins and if it's not working well those toxins are being recycled right back into your system and putting stress on the liver so that is my number one cell food is the second one i always recommend to patients cell food has amino acids enzymes um, and uh, so it's got a, a lot of the digestive enzymes in it too like the protease uh, for the protein breakdown and amylase for the fat breakdown. And so, and so if you have this and you're taking um, the cell food, it's going to alkalize the system. Now alkalizing the system, again, we were talking about earlier that uh, when you're more acidic, uh, it causes inflammation and every disease process is a result of the inflammation. So uh, this helps to decrease inflammation in the body. It helps to digest food and it helps to replace electrolytes that can bind with toxins to get them out of the body through the urine and through the feces. 
So that, that's two. The other thing that I take myself is Euphoria. It's a DNA-based nutritional supplement. And they, we take uh, swabs in the cheeks and we get your DNA tested for certain factors that could be causing health problems. And then a unique uh, formula is created for you specifically. And, um, you, and I take that. Since I've been myself taking that, the Euphoria for about six months, no other supplements have shown up for me to take, which for me is very unusual. Um, but um, it's, it's a really interesting product to also be on and to take that's unique to you and unique to your DNA. Okay, and and the third one one of these was cell food. As cell in, food, C E L L, cell, C E L L F O O D, cell food. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Very very good. Okay. Well, these are definitely one. Yeah, you know, CBD too is all. All of these are um, that that you guys have mentioned are ones that um, I do not take myself and i thought i was over my lifetime i developed the state of the art <laughs> so, so thank you so much i i have to go back to school here um, david right now on the cbds just to mention something about the cbds is right now there are products out there that are water-based and they take the whole flower and create the water-based uh, product instead of an oil-based product. The oil base is not absorbed as well in the body because we're mostly water, but so it might be only up to 10 to 20 percent of it absorbed. Whenever you take a water-based CBD, up to 70 to 80 percent can be absorbed. I just wow. wanted to throw that out there. Okay. I'm just making a note here. Um, and and as I mentioned, I'm, I'm you know slowing down here to take notes of what everyone said. I've got quite a, a, a cool list of uh, you know wise things to do and to avoid from this conversation. Okay, so at this point we are. Boy, we had one more question, and I know Gus has arrived too. And it's good to see you, Gus. And um, yeah, I went over to Gus's office um, last week, and, and very impressed with his process, structural body therapies. And thank you, Gus. Um, Anytime. Okay. And anyway. Okay, so the last question, which I'm wondering if we really have time to even get into, is maybe we'll leave this for next time, is what does an optimal health strategy look like in terms of your area of expertise? I don't think all of us could answer that question in like two minutes. So um, let's let's go ahead and save that for next time and uh, let's you know since since Gus is here Gus I'll just ask you our first question and see what how you would answer it our first question was what are the top five things everyone needs to do to be healthy in terms of your area of expertise and we'll we'll end with Gus's comments. So go yeah, ahead so, and reflect. Thank you. So yeah, I had to think about that. Uh, and what I came up, I, I tried to come up with five, I came up with four. And okay. this is a, 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 something that's been persisting with me for the last two weeks. And, you know, when I first started th this, this business my my intention and expectation was to move clients from a if they're in pain to a pain-free state to a functional state and then to a, a increased athletic performance state and then let them fly right mm -hmm. take off have a fantastic life may i never see you again and mm -hmm. 
and if something happens, you know where we're at, right? What I'm, what I'm, I've been feeling more and more is that life is brutal. There's so much going on with our bodies, with life, with our jobs, with our occupation, that the demands on the body that I'm now a believer that it is a good thing to routinely have body work. Uh, body work helps just restore the hydration into the fossil, the fossil system. Right? And it gives an opportunity for the therapist to see issues before they become, uh, to, see, to see postural issues before they become problems, be it in functionality or in pain or in decreased performance. So I've, I've, I've as of late, added that to my list of things to do. And uh, okay. so body work and by body work is someone working from the outside in. There's two other th aspects of being functional and being just a good human being that require us as, as people to do work. And that is mobility work and repatterning, right? There are things that you can do when you start feeling tightness, reduce functionality, you can, you know, you can take a mobility ball, you can take a band, open up space and joints, you can take a regulator ball, you know, uh, you have a pain in your calf, stick it in your calf, do some self maintenance. All right, so repat and, and then there's the repatterning exercises, like when I, you know, I've done, I, I've done three weeks straight of repatterning for my forward head, right? Both my wife and I, we were doing it together and we both had very positive impact in getting our head back into place, right? Mm -hmm. And then we stopped, mm -hmm. right? And we stopped, gravity hasn't, and we're still <laughs> on the computer, right? Yeah. We're still on our phones, right? So with times, we're going to be in the same spot again. So, but we have, but we know the exercise, we have them and we just start, okay, let's do them again. Right. So it's a, it, the mobility and the repairing are tools that we use to get back into a better space in order to prevent issues. Right. My motivation for my forward head, it was, I saw from an x-ray that I got at the chiropractor that it was going in the wrong direction. Mm -hmm. I lost my curvature and mm -hmm. my vertebrae were getting closer and closer. Right. Mm. That's not a space I want to be in. I'm very motivated to keep, be proactive about it, to stay away from that. And the other thing I recommend and for, and for maintenance is chiropractic visits. You know, their chiropractors are experts in the skeletal system. And it's nice to have a checkup to see, hey, where are we? Where's my skeletal systems? You know, what are we seeing? You know, x-rays are very helpful. You know, how much space do I have my, in between, in, you know, in, in between my vertebrae? You know, is my spine juicy? Is it fluid? Is it mobile, right? Or is it getting compacted? Do I need to create space? Mm -hmm. So, so I, I'm a fan of, of regular chiropractic visits. But nothing beats, you know, so what did I say? Body work, mobility, custom repairing, chiropractic care. Okay, so that's four. All right, so I do have a fifth. And I yes, say sir. the fifth beats them all right and to stay moving stay mobile move 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 right because that's you know our fascia needs to be healthy it needs to be uh fluid and it means that means it has to have water in it mm -hmm. and when in order to hydrate our fascia it's not just a question of drinking water it's actually a question of moving Mm -hmm. Movement is what keeps the fascia uh, hydrated, right? Mm -hmm. And, you know, and that's what, you know, that's when we're focusing the fascia, but just, you know, you feel good, you're out in, in, in the environment, you're outdoors, you're in the sun, you know, you're moving, you know, you're impacting your other systems, your cardiovascular, your lymphatic. Uh, there's so many advantages to being mo mobile, right? And it's part of being human, it's part of being alive motion so that is my fifth and it's the be all end all of my five items okay well let's just get on a roll here and give us the five things you would um avoid that we should avoid 
Okay. I had an even tougher time with that. Um, you know, it's, it's the things that work against the fascia. Repetitive move, movement, you know, or the lack of movement. Right? So repetitive movement, doing the same thing over and over again. You know, I, I, off, I often feel I have issues with my shoulder. Why? Because I go home and I spend three, four hours with one hand off the table, the other one on the mouse, resting on my wrist mm -hmm. on the table, right? In balance, right? Different forces, tensions going through my wrist than on the other side, right? So repetitive motion, lack of motion, and when and also restricted motion i this is something that i notice with athletes and something that i've done my myself one of the things when we are active we're doing motion in a limited capacity my example was i was doing push-ups right and i'm competing against 10 other people and i'm concerned about doing it quickly right so they're very short Mm -hmm. right not full range not full range movement right not engaging all of my muscles not engaging uh full range of motion and the body remembers that and it adapts and what happens is adhesions are created the body knows oh okay you you just do you know you're just doing this range of motion right you don't need these extremities right let's not even go there and what i found my scapulars were stuck I had to do repatterning exercises in order to develop muscles, in order to get them moving again, get them mobile again. One of the things that I don't know much about, but that I'm look that I, I'm really interested about is animal movement. It's where uh, uh, you take a person and you have them go through these really basic primitive movements. And what it really is, is just getting restoring functionality back into the body. What'd you call that? Animal movement animal movement animal movement okay and there's different names there's different modalities there's movnat as well i've seen like two or three different strategies or modalities for this but it's where it's just pure movement where it's hmm. a series of movements i want you to put your you know i want you to walk like this all right i want you to put your four you know uh your hands and feet on the floor, but I don't want you to put your knees on the floor and I want you to walk it. Then I want you to spin around this way, but mm. it's really it's reprogramming the body to remember to get into full range of movement of, of motion. Right. And the, and the movements look very simple, but they're deceptively hard to do, especially if you're not fully functional. Very interesting. I've, I've got a version of that too, that I, um, and this is probably not even what you're talking about, but when, when the first thing that came to mind when you said animal movement was as I'm running, I'm watching animals, actual animals in the, in the wilderness. And I've noticed that rabbits, deer, um, every animal I've seen when they're running through the wilderness, they take a hopping motion. And I've studied that and I've asked, why do they do that? And I, the conclusion I've come to is that you have your best um, planting of your feet when you plant them vertically, as opposed to planting them as you're also moving horizontally. And um, it's, it's, it's just something I've come up with myself, but, um, uh, yeah, yeah, it is a kind of animal motion that I take when I'm off, um, uh, trail. No, and you know, that's, you're looking at, you know, their, uh, their biomechanics, right? They're doing it intuitively, but there is a function behind it, you know? Okay. I, I, I don't remember, you know, when I look at animals, they have full range of motion. They're using their bodies completely. You know, I only see it in sick animals where there's some sort of restriction. But for us humans, you know, with with our, our current lifestyle, uh, I, I see it a lot. 
Okay. And I and I see your your link, Gus, that you sent in the chat, the chat, um, which is movenat.com, and I'll include this in the notes. Um, thank you. So thank you so much. And, and let's just let's just catch you up totally with um, your favorite supplement. And then we're all even. Oh, you need to unmute yourself. There you go. Thank you, Holly. Okay. <laughs> so what I was saying was I came in when Holly was 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 answering that question. I was like, whoa, that was really in in depth. And I, when I looked at what I have written, I was like, whoops. That's not much. And the challenge that I have <laughs> is I'm not a fan of supplements. And the reason being, I'm, I, I, you know, I, I consider myself very aware and very cognizant of my body and the impact that things have to it. So I take mm -hmm. supplements and I've, I haven't been noticing much of a, of a difference in change, you know, so, so I'm are you nothing, one of these people that try to get it in your diet as opposed to taking supplements. Right, right. And that's, you know, I do that for pragmatic reasons, mm -hmm. right? Cost, you know, mm -hmm. I, I could go broke with, with supplements. And two, yeah. I, I would rather get it from the source. And then if for whatever reason, there's a deficiency that I can't supply, then I'll go and get a supplement, right? Okay. But as of late, I rarely get an impact with a take a supplement. The closest thing I, I, I have that I, I've, I've noticed is with uh, melatonin. You know, the first time I took it, I was asleep in a minute, <laughs> right? And I've never had that reaction again. I can take three of them now. You know, maybe my body's adapting, but I'm, you know. Yeah, and I noticed that too with supplements. The, the first time you take a supplement, you may experience more of a result. And then if you, you know, later on, you, you turn it into a routine thing and you wonder, you know, what's the difference and, and why am I doing this? So there's, this, there's some truth to that. Interesting. Thank you, Gus. As I said a couple of times, if you take a look at these answers that have been given, you could almost put them on a flashcard and hold that flashcard, just one of those answers for a whole day and, and just focus on that one answer and then the next day do another um, transformative experience would result. So anyway, thank you all of you for, for sharing of your wisdom.